I usually don't really report on the state of the game because there's always something interesting to talk about and to be honest with you guys I'm a bit too lazy to do those uh, weekly recaps but today was uh, quite special because they actually confirmed that they're working on a Division 2 game and that they're ready to show off the game at this year's E3 in June. Uh, just take a quick listen for yourself. So I'm, I'm thrilled on behalf of the, the team at Massive and the teams that are working on the Division uh, worldwide to uh, exclusively announce uh, to our community first that we're working on the sequel to the Division, the Division 2. So yeah, this is actually some uh, pretty surprising news. I definitely was not expecting them to announce it this soon. I, of course, you know, I, I thought they were working on a Division 2 game. I talked about this already in my Year 3 predictions video and that kind of stuff. But for them to announce it in this state of the game, that was definitely not something that I saw coming. But hey, I'm not complaining. Now, obviously, the developers, they couldn't give much details yet. All that we know right now is, hey, uh, you know, the game is in development. Massive is, again, the lead development studio behind the game and then supported by Red Storm, Reflections, and Ubisoft Annecy. And we know that the game is going to be revealed at E3. That's when we're going to get gameplay. But aside from that, we don't know anything about the game yet. Now, the reasoning behind uh, the developers going for a second division game uh, instead of just building more up on the first game, it's because, as they worded it, there are so many things the developers could do more and better with the second game if they take the things that they learned from the first game and then, you know, start from scratch and that kind of stuff. You know, there are so many things wrong with the division right now, and it's very core that will most likely never get fixed. And they're able to fix those things with The Division 2. It's probably also a better financial decision to release another game. You know, a lot of people are going to buy that. It's going to give them more money than just a couple of DLC updates. Uh, so, you know, you can't really blame them there. Although they didn't say that themselves. But I think that goes without saying. So yeah, excitement at sight. I bet you've got a whole bunch of questions right now. Like, when is The Division 2 going to come out? And what does this mean for Division 1? Is that game dead now? Uh, and although, you know, I don't have all the answers, the developers actually gave some information on some of those things during the state of the game. So I want to go over that, and after that I also want to speculate a bit on what I think is going to happen. So yeah, first up, let's start off with uh, Division 1. Is that game dead now? Mm, nah, not really. Uh, I mean, the game is actually going to receive a few more updates that might bring people back to the game. Although, as I expected, it will not be anything too significant. Nothing as big as patch 1.8 was. So far, the developers have confirmed two updates, an April update and a June update. And I think that that's pretty much going to be all that the Division 1 is going to receive. Uh, the April update is actually pretty big. It will come out with two new global events with different modifiers that we haven't seen before, which will also come with new accommodations and new masks to go with that that you can unlock. It will add two new legendary modes to the game. Uh, and it will also add the increased drop rates, the classified gear and exotics and the vision tech that uh, they talked about implementing a couple of weeks ago. And for the Xbox players, there's also the uh, Xbox One enhanced graphics thing that... Uh, that they had no news about until now. That graphics update thing is also coming with the April update. Now for those that missed it, the classified and exotic drop rate increase isn't just the upping of the chances of getting classified gear from bosses and such, but it adds a whole bunch of ways to get classifieds in the game now and it just it bumps everything up to make the grind a little bit less fatiguing. I'm gonna just list what they're changing right here real quick. So the drop rates from bosses they're going to go up from 3% to 6% uh, to get a classified item in and out of the DZ boat. Uh, then the final drops in Legendary Missions, they give you a 20% chance to get a classified. The Season Pass Supply Drops, only the Season Pass Supply Drops and not the normal Supply Drops in the Dark Zone, those actually have a 10% chance to give you a classified item as well and give you 100 Division Tech. Uh, they will add a purchasable classified cash, which will give you a guaranteed classified item of any kind. So you can just buy that and hope you get lucky. There will also be a targeted gear set cash that you can buy during the global events, which will always give you a specific gear set. So for example, if you're playing Outbreak and you can get, I don't know, Lone Star, Final Measure and Deadeye, then you will have a Deadeye cash, a Final Measure cash and a Lone Star cash. And if you buy that, it will 100% drop a Final Measure item, a Deadeye item or a Lone Star item. You will also get some division tech for completing daily and weekly assignments now. You get 25 div tech for completing a daily and then 100 div tech for completing a weekly. All the exotics in the game, they have been added to the loot pool of the light zone bosses. So if you kill a light zone boss now, you're going to be able to get any type of exotic item that you want. 
and the buyable exotic weapons from the shop, they are removed from any of the exotic loot pools. So uh, you're not going to get a Liberator or a Historian anymore as a drop when you get an exotic. Those are the drop rate changes that are coming with the April update. This is all coming in the April update. Now, overall, I think these changes and additions are pretty good. You know, I've seen some outrage of people saying, you know, I farm my gears for hours during the global event. Why make it easier for others to get that gear now? But uh, I don't I don't really agree with that. I mean, uh, the players that grind during the global events, they've had the reward in the way where they got the classified items before anyone else. I think for anybody stepping into the game right now, it's going to be almost impossible to play catch up if they don't change anything. Uh, especially if we're going to get new global events and not guaranteed the older global events again, which then makes it harder to get specific gear. And I think it's always a good thing to make all the gear more accessible for everybody, especially in a game like this. I'm not saying that the gear should be given away for free, but I don't think that that's the case right now. The grind will still be there, it will just be much less time consuming and more rewarding. So yeah, I think it's good news all around, but that's just, you know, my opinion. Now, one last thing to note is that there will also be a PTS for all of this that will start tomorrow. So you can start downloading the PTS for the Division right now. And on the PTS, they will test these things out. I'm assuming there will be the new Legendary Missions, uh, the new Global Events will be tested out there, and of course the new Drop Rates. Although I don't think a lot of people are really going to test the Drop Rates that much, because, I mean, who is really going to grind for items if you can't keep them? So, you know, there's that. Uh, and this PTS will also only be available on PC. So if you're on console, you're sort of out of luck, which is a bit unfortunate. But hey, on the other side, you know, there's not any major things to test out anyway. It's just the new legendary modes and then the two new global event modifiers. Now, I personally think that they should have used this PTS as an opportunity to make some changes to some of the gear sets and maybe look at what works and what doesn't. Just because it's on the PTS, that doesn't mean that it has to go to the live servers per se. Uh, and I think that a lot of people have been asking for changes for months now to some gear sets. So yeah, this would have been the perfect time to test a what-if scenario. What if we actually did this? How would that balance out the game? I think this is a missed opportunity. To me, it just looks like they do not have the resources for these type of things anymore. It very much already looks like 98% of their people are already working on the Division 2. And maybe I'm calling this too soon. But I think that if the developers had any plans of changing any of the gear sets... It would have been right here with this opportunity. So I think I think we can stop talking about gear sets right now because I don't think anything is going to happen to them anymore. Maybe in June, you know, we'll see. Uh, we'll see a few changes. But yeah, talking about the June update, this uh, this is also much much smaller. It's not as big as the April update. It will only add two more legendary missions in addition to the two that we already had, and we're gonna get a new feature called shields, which is basically achievements or accommodations things you can complete things you can do in the game but instead of giving you rewards accommodation score or a new vanity item for the division one uh, they're going to give you rewards for the division two now of course they did not mention any specifics but i'm probably thinking about you know just cosmetic items special patches etc etc for a long time players uh, it doesn't really matter though that they didn't confirm anything because the fact that they're doing this is, is a very big thing on its own. This tells me more and more that Division 2 is not that far away anymore. You have to keep in mind that in June we of course also have E3. This is around the time when they're going to reveal the Division 2 and when the marketing for this game is really going to start. Uh, so it sort of makes sense that they're pushing the Division 1 players... Uh, to do things uh, for progress in the Division 2 to get everybody hyped up. And this is also where I want to start speculating a bit. Because in my year 3 and Division 2 predictions video, I said that I believe that the Division 2 will come out early next year, uh, early 2019. And now, especially with, uh, with the Shields feature and all this extra information that we have, and the confirmation that they're going to reveal the game at this year's E3, I even more so believe that this is the case. I've heard the argument being made that uh, the first Division was uh, revealed in 2013, and it only came out in 2016. So by that logic, the Division 2 is not going to come out until at least 2020, but... Uh, yeah, no, I don't really think that's the case. Uh, the constant delays and delays and delays of the first game didn't do much good for it. You know, it wasn't too good for the marketing. And if anything, I think they would really want to avoid history repeating itself. I think they want to have a much cleaner situation this time. They want to reveal the game build up hype over the end of 2018 and then drop the game in 2019. The one thing that kind of caught me, you know, uh, a little bit, the one thing that I wanted to pay a bit of attention to is the fact that the developer said on stream that they could do so much more with a Division 2 and basically have a fresh start. Uh, and that's, that's a very good thing for me to hear and I'm going to take this quite serious actually. This basically tells me that the Division 2 is not going to simply be a reskin with a new story 
in a different part of the city or in a different city altogether. It tells me that they're actually, you know, going to look at the game, what is wrong with the game, and then start from scratch to build something that is much better than what we have right now. I think a lot of people are quite afraid that the Division 2 might end up like Destiny 2. Uh, which is still very possible, of course. We haven't seen anything about the game yet, so I'm not going to hype anything up or whatsoever. But this, this one line, it at least tells me that they are aware of the possible pitfalls. They are aware of the situations, and it gives me some hope that we're not going to get a straight-up copycat. Either way, though, hearing about a sequel is good news for me. I wanted this to happen more than I would want them to build up on the first game for pretty much the same reasons. You know, the lag, the netcode, the hackers, you know, the many things that are just wrong with this game. Um, getting a fresh start is going to be a very good thing. And of course, you know, I, myself, from a personal situation, if, if we're being honest, I built my YouTube channel on a division. And although it isn't to say that I cannot do anything else besides that, at least now I know that there's also a future, even if I were to just stick it out with a division and just the division alone. My, my life just went from, hmm, I'm, I'm pretty unsure where the future will go from here. I... I want to try out a few things to uh, to a situation where I'm like, cool, you know, I can chill. The next two years are pretty much secured for me unless something goes wrong in, in many, many ways. Now I just got to hope that uh, Division doesn't suck at launch. Otherwise, I'm back to being in this awkward position. All jokes aside, though, um, initial reactions, guys. Are you happy with this? Disappointed that they're kind of leaving the Division in the dust a little bit, you know, putting it on autopilot after a few more updates? Are you excited that Division 2 is probably less than a year away? And most importantly, what do you want from this game? And, and don't say fix the lag or the netcode. That, that's so easy. That is, that, that is a must-have before we even start this conversation. So yeah, uh, if that's still fucked with the sequel, then uh, shit's fucked. But we'll see. Uh, let me know what you guys are thinking. As always, I will see you guys later. Or like they say, in the Netherlands, see you later.